Hi there. Welcome to A Creative Affair, a collection of conversations exploring creativity through the art of photography and so many other creative passions. I'm Len, a lifelong professional educator. I am currently running my own photography school here in Sydney, Australia. Teaching and inspiring others to grow creatively is my purpose in life. Not only am I highly skilled in it, I gray this I gain this great um, emotional joy from the educational process. Do you know I can think of nothing better than getting outside uh, somewhere beautiful with a bunch of creatives? Uh, Brie, I, I photograph tiny native orchids and uh, I can think of nothing better than spending a day in an exotic flower garden smelling the flowers. <laughs> I'm picturing you doing this. <laughs> and I am Bree. I am a Texas-based, I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm a Texas-based nature and landscape photographer, and I'm a coach for creative minds. And guess what? Now I'm a podcast host. I also never thought it would be any of those things. <laughs> It just seems kind of crazy to me, but it's pretty amazing. Um, and I also think it's amazing what we can all create when we put our minds to it. And just by way of uh, you were talking about smelling, I adore <laughs> perfume. <laughs> Oh, yum. <laughs> I know. My life, um, I I haven't worn a lot of perfume in my life, but my life was changed uh, by a saleswoman at a boutique in the Heathrow Airport about two years ago, almost exactly two years ago now. Okay, so um, quick little mini story. I, I had hours to waste and I just kept circling and circling and peeking in this store and finally I went in and I had this beautiful long scarf on that I had purchased in Berlin and I was on my way home. Uh, the reason I'm wearing the scarf is because I couldn't fit it in my suitcase. <laughs> I had stuffed it so <laughs> yes, full. We all have that. <laughs> and the woman said, oh you're traveling. You must sm uh, she was Turkish with a beautiful accent and I can't replicate it, but it was beautiful. And she just spritzed me all over about eight times and said, you must smell beautiful when you travel. And I was sold. Done. I purchased <laughs> three bottles and now I have even more. And I actually, um, I actually mix and match them. And that's my creative thing I do for some, you know, sometimes. And I even, I'm wearing some today, so I'm sorry you can't smell any. <gasps> oh no, I'm missing out on that yes, gorgeous you are. smell of you, Brie. <laughs> right? <laughs> I won't tell you what the, oh, something is falling in my house. I won't tell you what it smells like, but it's beautiful. Um, it's actually mm. a flower, so there you go. Oh, well, there you go. And I love <laughs> smelling the flowers. <laughs> and I sometimes wear it when I want to feel inspired or when I'm working on something. And so coincidentally, today's topic is inspiration. So here we go. Mm. <laughs> isn't that a, isn't it fascinating that we can f um, find inspiration from a smell? Uh, isn't right. it, I find that absolutely fascinating. Apparently, smells are also incredibly good at triggering um, memories and uh, emotional responses, and no wonder that we can get inspiration from something like that. Uh, and also interesting in your story there, um, Brie, is that doing something like mixing and matching your perfumes in the morning can be a creative act, which can also be totally inspirational and uh, fascinating. Yeah, Absolutely sometimes fascinating. I mix three of them. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Yeah, I I um I love the fact that you can have a memory from them. You know, so there's that one, always that one in particular. I I think of my travels, um, and and I also think uh, I also think. I'm sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background. We both are doing this from our homes. We don't have special <laughs> studios here, so. <laughs> I think on the last one, there were birds on yours and I have a dog on mine. So, you know, we, um, this is how we roll. So, but I, 
I think there are so many ways we can have inspiration. And I I just do that sometimes for a little boost. And I put that on. And um, I mean, I don't do it when I am going out to hike because I actually want to smell the smells of the outside. Right. Um, but there are so many there are so many ways that we can find inspiration. So uh, let's first can we I want to talk about some ways we find inspiration. But first, I think it would be great to talk about why we actually want it. Because sometimes we, like, we all know we want it, right? I, like, I want to be inspired. You want to be inspired. We all want inspiration. But why do we actually want it? Like, what is the thing? Like, what is it? What is the reason we want that drives us to go go out and get the inspiration, right? Because sometimes we're doing this very purposefully, Um, and so for me, the reason I want inspiration is just so I can do, I can be creative, right? Mm, I mean, mm. it's pretty easy. And we do talk about that in our first full episode. It's called what is creativity. So, um, we talk (laughs) all about like why, you know, the why and how and what of being creative. So you can go back and listen to that. I'll put a link to that one in the show notes. Um, but why do you want inspiration, Len? So uh, I, well, I'm just trying to analyze what you're saying there. And, uh, um, it, it sounds like it's a motivational thing that it, it, it actually is a, a lifter and uh, um, it's a, a, like a, a carrot or a, a something that pulls us towards creativity. It's a, uh, putting out, when, when we talked about our, our smelling the smells and, and going back to a memory, it becomes a trigger. And uh, as a creative, we're, we're looking for so many different triggers or, or uh, things to set ourselves up to be in a creative space. And uh, for me, and I was just wondering if this is for you too, that uh, inspiration is a motivating fa- uh, uh, element that will actually get us, uh, get our juices and our ideas and our thoughts bubbling behind us so that we actually go out and do something uh, rather than just sit and think about it. Although I think that's a very, very good thing is to to let your mind wander off, but that's another whole issue. <laughs> so, But I'm motivational. Uh, I think inspiration for me is so much about motivation and finding that motivation to go and be creative. Yeah. Yeah, it's for me as well. And and um, one thing I, I I like to write down notes because then I, <laughs> because I'm thinking I mean you and I are thinking about what we're going to discuss and and we're really putting um, some real thought and effort into really figuring out the like some of the underlying reasons for all of these things and and uh, besides just that creativity and the motivation it like in, like going to find inspiration it feeds my soul. And that is actually one of the things that we talk about in, in, um, our first, and I think it's, well, it's the, what is creativity? Um, but for me, it like feeds my soul. And even if I, well, I was going to say, even if I never use that in my art, but I don't think we can separate that. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it, it helps me satisfy this desire to, uh, to, for, for input. And, and there's something that I get out of it. And the reason, and just by way of information, I really think the reason we do anything is because of how we think we're going to feel. And so when we're looking for inspiration, um, when I am looking for inspiration, it's because of how I'm going to feel. Like I, I, I feel amazing when I have that emotion inside of me, when, uh, when I feel inspired. And Len, I don't know if you remember this, but in that, in that episode, do you know what you said? No, <laughs> I got a very short memory. I, on some, I know, on I know, but words. I wrote down this quote that you said. You said, "My greatest joy is creating for myself," and so uh, when yes. you, I see how when you're looking, possibly, 
I mean, I'm just curious when you're looking for, when you either look for inspiration or feel inspired, how joyful is that? Because you're like, now you can take that and be, you know, and be creative. And of course you're saying here in this quote that that's your greatest joy. And that's, that's what, I mean, amazing. That's what I want too. I find so much satisfaction in, in, in the act of creating and, um, and, and even more so when I'm doing it from, uh, something that I, I feel like a newly inspired from like a, some new inspiration. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Like I, I may now be, I may now actually be paying attention when I wear perfume and maybe what I'm creating now that I've made some connections here. So I'm curious about <laughs> what that will look like in the future. <laughs> Maybe I'll report I'm really, back. <laughs> I'm really interested in um, this idea about um, uh, going out to find inspiration as opposed to finding something inspirational. And and I think that these perhaps are, are maybe two separate things. And I, I, I know I don't sit down with a book of other people's photographs um, seeking inspiration. I don't mentally sit down and go, well, what can I um, take from this? I actually, in I go into the process to enjoy other people's work. And I sit down and uh, totally immerse myself wandering through uh, through their work, as I do in an art gallery. I, I don't go to the art gallery and say, well, I'm going to find inspiration. I, I go because I love to go. And I absolutely enjoy being there. And then while I'm wandering through those artworks, uh, an idea springs up in my mind uh, that I then lock away as that moment of inspiration or that um, little thing to take to go and play with. And it's a, it's an idea rather than uh, something that's actually finished. So... Uh, I, I don't think that I actually search for inspiration in that sense. I think it's a, it's a natural process that I find um, while I'm living my life to the fullest um, and uh, immersing myself in uh, uh, work, other people's artworks, uh, people, um, being a community member, being a family member, being a, you know, a father, all those things. Um, uh, that immersion pulls out and they all become uh, those inspirational moments. Does that make sense to you? Rather, it's, a, uh, yeah. it's something that happens and rather than something that I set out to do. Yeah, and I think it's, it sounds like the way you have designed your life is that you are doing things naturally, that... Um, you are just doing things naturally and, and, and finding inspiration uh, and just being inspired by what you normally do because, because the things that you enjoy are also inspiring to you. I don't know if that was just made it like a little <laughs> circle, like a little spiral, right? But, you know, I think, and I think that's, I think that's a beautiful thing that we create a life that, where we are, where we have a regular, um, where we have regular input of, of, uh, of stimulus. Maybe, yeah. Stimulus or, you know, so I was thinking beauty, um, uh. you know, enjoyment maybe of, of things that we think are things that we think are like creatively stimulating. Right. Mm. And, um, and you emotionally know, so engaging. Yeah. And I, I think that's why a lot of people read, um, you know, like, and we were talking about here, like, you know, where do we find this inspiration? Right. So a lot of people read, um, you know, you go, you open um, art, you know, photo, you know, books of photography and I'm starting a little connect a little collection and I don't know where to put them now <laughs> so oh, you'll have to make space <laughs> I know I'm going to but I do I am I am trying to make time for myself to just enjoy them because 
partly because I know I will find inspiration in them, right? And so it's maybe not necessarily that we're going out to look for it, but we are doing things that where we know we're going to find inspiration and inspiration mm-hmm. that we that we really want. But you know, sometimes sometimes we I think in general people can get so busy in their lives of doing the work and doing, you know, doing all the things that we do. I mean, you know, if you drive a car, your oil needs changing and all those, you know, (laughs) just all of those little daily things that sometimes we forget that we want that and we want that inspiration. And so sometimes we really do have to make and make time for it Mm, uh, mm. in and it's a very specific way. We're saying we want to sit down and just. I'm going to take the photogra- the book of you know photography, for example, and it could be any genre, anything you're interested, anything, anything you're interested in, um, that or that draws you to it, right? But saying I have a high chance of being inspired by this person's work. I like the feeling that I get, that I have when I'm looking at it, um, when I'm enjoying it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find some inspiration within this book and maybe notice things, even though I've looked at it 10 times before, I'm going to find something in here that's going to stand out to me that I've actually never seen before. And it's so that, and that's a new inspiration. So ah. um, that's also interesting, right? To go back to the things that... Um, that we really enjoy yes, and finding definitely. new inspiration. Do there. you know, Brie, I actually very rarely go through a book cover to cover and totally immerse myself in every single artwork in there. Uh, I actually dip into them and uh, sit with them and take in a, a small amount of ones that are catching my attention at the time that I'm feeling an emotional connection with. And then I sit with them and enjoy them. And uh, uh, for my own entertainment, I uh, analyze them and think about them. Uh, And from that process uh, comes up uh, an inspirational thought. Um, sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And then I'll go back another day and uh, there's, you know, my coffee table's covered in, in books and I'll, I'll pull out a different one and uh, I'll open it and I'll flick through and then I'll find something that really connects with me and then I spend time with them. And so I'm always going back and revisiting books over and over and over, um, trying to enjoy them fully. Uh, uh, Ralph Gibson often says to uh, his photography students, like, how often do you actually ever spend real time with an artwork? I I know this at an art gallery. uh, 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 When I'm standing in front of an artwork that really, really moves me, I stand there for 10 minutes and I'm totally engaged and immersed. And then, you know, we're wandering past something that doesn't engage me. I don't even stop. If, it, if, it's, if it's not intellectually, emotionally, physically drawing me in, I don't bother too much worrying about it. And uh, I search for those things that connect with me personally. And, of course, it's going to keep spiralling back to me because my art is always about me. And uh, uh, learning to uh, understand who I am through this process is incredibly, in, incredibly deeply um, satisfying, deeply educational, and profound, moving, and being and is inspirational. Yeah, I, I go. I love. I was going to mention. I I love going to um, art galleries and uh, every city I'm in I try and go and I can never go through the whole thing I'll pick three areas to go I mean I mean I could probably just go through one area and go okay I guess I'm gonna have to come back to the city like 10 more times so I can see the rest but um you know maybe I'll go to three areas I did that in 
Boston. I, I just did that in San Antonio. And, um, you know, every, every time I, every time I go, I find new, I, I just, I love seeing the new things and seeing yes. what people create. And, you know, the thing is, is I, I will look at things sometimes that don't necessarily catch my eye, but maybe look interesting. And I try and understand it a little bit more because sometimes when I try and spend some time with it and understand, then I, that's when I'm that's when I have the inspiration because maybe something doesn't catch my eye at first but then when I go a little bit deeper I have a deeper understanding and that's when I I I get the inspiration um mm, I want to yeah. I want to share something that I did write um I th- there's a book called uh Steal Like an Artist and um shout out to my friend Michael who told me about it um uh but in here, so I, I do. You mind if I read a couple of quotes, Lynn? No, please do. I love I quotes. Actually, <laughs> I actually, I've I've done a um, a presentation on this book because uh, I, I find the work inspiring and interesting, and have deeply engaged with um, Austin's book. Actually, I have all of his books here on my shelf. Oh, fabulous! I just have the one <laughs> because I've just you know I'm I'm. I'm diving. I'm doing a deep dive, but you can't do everything, right? And so, um, but if for anyone that doesn't know, this book, uh, "Steal Like an Artist," it's it feels so short, but there's so yes. much like meat in there, and so um, it's very digestible. So we highly recommend it. We'll put a link to find that um, in the show notes. But uh, so there's a couple of quotes that are in here that I think are are really amazing. And uh, when one thing he says is, "The artist is a collector." So we're all collectors. We're just going around finding inspiration. Like you said, drawing out a little bit, storing it in a file, right? Like, so we're just, and this is part of creativity. I mean, we talked, we talked in our, in that episode about, uh, about creativity is taking all the little pieces and putting it together in a unique way. Mm -hmm. And that's, we have, um, we have a bird here in Australia called a bower bird and, uh, It travels uh, the country looking for coloured objects, and and uh, different different types of them have uh, different um, pre collections. And the one in the Blue Mountains that I know very well loves blue things. So when you find the bowerbird's nest, it's full of little blue feathers and blue leaves and blue berries. And now in our modern age, it's got blue straws, blue uh, clothes pegs, and other blue things. So this bowerbird collects stuff to make a beautiful nest so he can woo his uh, future lover to his nest. Now, I think that as artist, as a collector, is a, an incredibly beautiful concept that um, we, we have the whole world out there. We have so many influences that um, are allowing them to come into us um, and taking little bits from here and there uh, is such and such a special thing to do. Now, um, there's only one thing about Austin's um, work. Uh, some people find the word stealing a, a, a bit triggering, and uh, sometimes I think it's not quite the right word. But I'm sure he's he's you know he's used that word to increase his hits on, on his website. You know that sort of um, uh, overemphasis on the word. He doesn't actually mean appropriate other people's work and and turn it into your own. He means he's take ideas from as many different places in the world that is absolutely possible. Um, So many artists talk about this, that all art starts with reality. It has to start with something out there. And, uh, and of course, it can start from other people's work and uh, from our muses and uh, uh, from Mother Nature. So uh, I think reframing that word can be a, a, a very important part in the, a step of understanding what Austin is saying, because what he's saying is, is absolutely beautiful. Now, you've got another quote there. Did you want to read the next well, one? Uh, well, let Thomas? me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll oh, add a little something. No, it's okay. I'll add a little something to that. He does clarify in the book, there's a difference between stealing, right, you're taking a bit and then turning it into your own versus copying, right? Mm. And so copying is like a direct, like I'm going to do it exactly like 
someone else. And that's not where we want to be. We want to be finding inspiration. And I agree with you about the stealing part. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it feels like you're robbing someone else. Um, but we're t- we're we are kind of taking the inspiration and and putting it with other inspiration and turning it into something of our own. Um, and so the other the other thing he says uh, the other thing he says uh, let's see he says a couple of things here. Um, your job is to collect good ideas. The more good ideas, and by the way, you get to decide what good ideas are because that's what our, we course. get to decide what good means, yeah, yeah. right? So the more good ideas that you collect, the more you can choose from to be influenced by. Um, and and I would like to interject at right now like what when i am being inspired by something in that moment what that feels like for me and so i actually wrote a little i wrote a little something in my book because i don't keep my books pristine i like mark them all up i have little tabs and you can see like i I have little you know all the things (laughs) so um so i i wrote like how do we know when something speaks to our soul Like, how do we know when we're feeling inspired? Of course, we're like, oh, I feel inspired. But for me, I wanted to like actually quantify it and say out loud what was happening in me, because this is a lot of the work I'm doing is really having awareness of what is happening for me when I'm actually feeling inspired. So when I feel inspired, um, I have this like little hum vibration in my body. So I don't know if that feels like, and maybe everyone feels this a little bit different, right? Um, my mind has like a little, like, um, there's like a little tingling in my mind. Maybe uh, it's kind of like an enlightened feeling. Like, I think I'm learning something mm. here, right? And I get this like somehow this energy inside me, right? I don't know if you felt like this. When you feel inspired, you don't walk away feeling tired. You walk away feeling this extra energy. Like I just collected something that is maybe going to push me forward in my work. And I, and anyway, I just wanted to kind of, I just kind of wanted to put that all into words. And maybe, right. yeah. <laughs> Is that is that the same feeling that you get when you know that you've got a beautiful photograph or a, a, you've created a, a gorgeous artwork? Is, is there a, quite a similarity there? Uh, and I find this absolutely fascinating. We must do a whole episode on this, but um, you're describing to me physical feelings. Uh, and I know as a kid when people say, oh, feelings, uh, uh, we you know, there's something in our mind maybe, but you're talking about a, a, a tingling, uh, a, an energy that comes into you that's uh, so, so uplifting. Uh, the reason I ask that, for me, I think that's uh, so, so similar. It's a, uh, it, it's a rush through my whole body and I, I can feel it. Yeah. I think maybe it's a little different for everyone. Um, when I am making a photograph that I just know with every fiber of my being is like something that I've really connected with and is going to be really special. Uh, that's kind of the similar feeling that I get. And, and um, I, so, yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. And by the way, in the work that I do, our emotions, we can call them something, but really we're calling them we're saying calling them a name based on um based on whatever is happening for us it, within our minds and our bodies so i really think emotions are that like s- somatic connection between our mm-hmm. mind and our body and so and and there are our emotions are really the sensation in our body that we are calling a name and so that's and- just a, a little a, a little <laughs> <laughs> they must they must be a chemical release that we're feeling. Yeah. Um there's something is is going off in our body, uh, a chemical reaction there's um something's being released and uh, we're actually feeling that through our bodies and then we're using these words uh to describe them. And I I'm I'm wondering as I'm sitting here listening and and talking uh that inspirations on a on a scale 
um, for the release of probably the same chemicals uh, that uh, bring us uh, happiness and uh, excitement and uh, um, engagement. I know that uh, in the process of creating beautiful artworks, that um, the, the rush of chemicals through my body has been so, so powerful. Um, I've been uh, uh, basically stoned off my head for about an hour afterwards <laughs> and um, unable to function um, because of it and, and just giggling and laughing and uh, I haven't even been able to pick up the camera again for a period of time. And I actually label those um, peak photographic experiences because uh, the amount of chemicals that have been released into my body um, ha have actually, uh, I feel them totally and uh, uh, totally overtake me. And I, I believe I'm addicted to them and I actually go out hunting for this feeling and it, it can be the light, the subject, uh, my mood, my emotions, everything comes together. So when I go back to um, when I'm living life and um, uh, I'm, you know, reading books or poetry or watching movies and I start to get this little rush of emotional response for to something, um, being an artist and being in tune with myself and becoming really aware of it, um, I, I then know, oh, there's something going on here. Um, I need to actually cognitively think about that and uh, figure out what is the inspiration or well, how can I use this? What can I take from this to use in my art? So I, I'm actually always looking for inspiration without actually having looking. my um, Sherlock Holmes thing out looking for it. I, I'm just uh, waiting for it to happen. Right, and that's how we know. I'm not searching. I'm waiting for it. Right. And that's how, like, I love how you described it because that's how we know we're being inspired, right? Is, and is because of all of that happening. And I also, for me also, um, it's also, I also wanted to say it's a longing to create something in a similar way. Like, I don't know if you have that <gasps> longing, like, it's like a, I see something and, or I hear something or whatever it is. And I'm like, I, I need to use this. Like, I, I like almost like it, dr I'm driven to save it and use it in, in a similar way. And then we take all of these things that we're inspired by, and then we want to put them to like, we want to put them together, or maybe we're somewhere, you know, we're, we're create in the act of creating, and all of a sudden, we have this memory, and maybe the memory comes from this emotion that we feel, because I think our bodies remember this too. It they our body bodies remember the emotion and remember what it's like. And we're like, oh yeah, this is where I need to make this connection and put it in here. So, um, mm. so yeah, it's just it like, what a beauty. I think it's a beautiful thing to, to really have this awareness of what's going on. And, and, um, by the way, th th these are all not in any of the notes that we talked about, but, <laughs> <laughs> and my mother-in-law, actually, I was talking to her today and she said, you know, as we create, because she's, she writes and she said, you know, as we create, we have emotions, but as we have deeper, like the act of creating can help us have deeper and deeper emotions. And when we connect with mm. our emotions on such a deeper level, then we can actually like, that's when we're really doing the good, that good creative work is when we're connecting with those emotions, those deep, those deep emotions, because we've got like different, you know, different levels. So I just thought that I just thought that was interesting. And um, I, so maybe we talk about that at a different time, too. I've, I've <laughs> noticed over my life that I've become more emotional. Yes, uh, me as too. an artist. So the more time that I spend in the creative realm, and I've been doing it my whole, <clears throat> my whole life, um, uh, I've become more in tune with uh, my own feelings and uh, learning to surf them, follow them, listen to them, react to them uh, is, uh, to me, the key of becoming more effective as an artist uh, and expressing myself is... Uh, actually tuning in to who I am as a person.
Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, wait, let me pause, pause, Lynn. I, I want to say like, <laughs> I also, I, I also want to say that too, why we want inspiration is because I think we're all searching for this unique vision that we have, that, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if we're mm. like actively searching for it, but somehow when we are a creative, we like, we're looking for a way to express ourselves in, on, in an individual way. And so as we, as we are inspired um, in the ways that we just talked about, as we are inspired, we can use that to create our own unique vision, which can change over time too, as we have new inspirations too. Um, and uh, so there's also a quote in Steal Like an Artist that Austin says, he says, if we're free from the burden, and by the way, just coaching note, <laughs> we create the burden. <laughs> so we <laughs> yeah, create all this burden, right? There's no one creating it for us. We create it for ourselves. So if we're, cre- if we're free from the burden of trying to be completely original, meaning we're trying to find our unique vision, right? Do, do something unique yes, to ourselves. Yes. We can stop trying to make something out of nothing and we can embrace influence instead of running away from it. And I think that speaks to like being in touch with who we are and really finding out who we are so we can take all this inspiration and, and make something out of it, right? Like we don't have to run away from being, from any kind of influence or inspiration, right? Cause that's impossible we get to collect that we get to take that in and decide what we're going to do with it like and so i'm we sorry we are <laughs> the key to this is that we are all unique individuals isn't it Bree? that uh, we are unique we um every single person on the earth is is different from each other and uh, that's what makes the world such a, a beautiful place and uh, uh, our art uh, is inevitably going to be unique when it focuses on who we are and our own emotional response. And um, by uh, this is an issue I've suffered from my life is this wanting to be unique and it's blocked me up and, and messed me up uh, so many times. And uh, eventually coming to this place where I realise, well, I'm actually the unique one. All I have to do is be true to myself. Uh, true to my own interests, true to my own emotions, and therefore my work will be unique. And I don't need to worry about whether it's copying anyone or anything else because I'm trying to be um, true to myself. So that burden does lift as I shift around with uh, my way of thinking about how I'm approaching uh, the art and the act of creativity. And I think that can start with really listening to what um or under being aware of what we are inspired by and i think back Mm. to i'm discovering that i like i like to make images that are less complicated that are a little bit more minimal i think you know and i'm i'm discovering this kind of in my journey (laughs) and i just thought today when i was thinking about all the ways that i like to be inspired um all of the all of the like composers and artists and you know i i love the music of philip glass I don't know if anyone's listened to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do too. And um, I, I love, is it Connor Squatsy is power, one of his um, works? Yeah. Queen of class? Yes, it is. I, I forget how to pronounce that. But he has some beautiful <laughs> minimalist um, music. And I, I remember hearing this because, you know, I, I'm actually, I majored in music uh, at university. And, and I remember hearing his work for the very first time and thinking, what is this? I've never heard anything like this before. And just listening to it over and over again and finding new pieces <laughs> and new pieces. And, um, and, and now I see that now I'm making some connections between that, that I found inspiring to what I like doing now. It's such an interesting connection to make. And now guess what I'm going to go do? I'm going to play some more Philip class next time I'm like <laughs> editing or, you know, out doing my photography. <laughs> So. Can I also suggest that you actually um, track down those movies, Connor Squatsy, Power Squatsy, and then the cinema photographer, Ron Fick, uh, Flick, is it Fick? He goes on to do a, a film called Baraka, 
and um, uh, that's all really quite connected. And uh, I, Baraka was shot in seventy millimeter, and I was in the front row uh, when it was re- when I got to see it in Sydney uh, at a small theatre by myself, virtually, just to see how beautiful the print is. And uh, talking about inspiration, uh, all of those films were incredibly inspirational to me as a young person. And uh, I still have copies of them in my my DVD collection. Oh, absolutely beautiful. So I, I love Philip Glass's work. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's fascinating that now we actually have a, a link there to something visual. Right, <clears throat> right. Which is and, beautiful. And that is, so I think we're what we're doing is interspersing some different ways we can find inspiration, right? And one of them mm. is music. Of course, so many people are inspired by music. It's so, um, you know, it's, there's something, and I don't know the science behind it, but there's something about the music and the auditory that that um, influences us in so many different ways, and and I think I think it would be interesting if you if you make music, you know, if that's your creative work, you know, who who are you inspired by? What inspires you? And also, if you're not, if you do something visual or not, or you know, there's you're speaking, what you know, what music inspires you, and what are the similarities there to to that right um the, another another way that i'm inspired i like impressionist work which is also mm. i think a little bit more minimalist i i like um i like georgia o'keefe she as an artist she i don't think she's necessarily minimalist but certainly her work is not busy um, she has some muted tones and, um, you know, so I'm finding a lot of similarities in, you know, the art I'm inspired by and the music I'm inspired by um, and and what what I'm doing in my own personal work. You know, not that I have to copy Georgia O'Keeffe. I don't. Right. But but just interesting how that is now translating to what I'm well, doing. Well, this. What, as you study George's work and um, have a really good look at it and you actually work out what is exciting about it to you, you can take those elements as your inspiration. Like you just mentioned then uh, the colour palette. Yes. And uh, just taking the colour palette away and, and playing with it and you end up with a, a, a gorgeous, soft set of pastely muted tones from one painting and from another one you end up with a a fiery feminist um uh uh confrontation not a confrontation but a um a a passionate uh, emotional thing on on another one and uh uh, each artwork uh has a, a different tone doesn't it yeah. And uh, and, and it's I so inspirational. Yeah, I find so I went to I, I went to a gallery and I walked around. So what I do, this is how kind of I collect some of my inspiration. Um, I just have a little like folder on my phone and my photos, and I really just take my phone around and click things. So I'm always like taking a picture, t- making a little quick iPhone photo of the sky. I think the sky is incredibly inspirational, always different colors. Um you know, I mean, you know, I love my clouds, <laughs> but I'm always, <laughs> I, you know, I think that's, a, for me, that's important to kind of have a visual reference of some of the things. So if I'm going to an art gallery and I can take photos, I do. I sometimes get real close and take photo of something like, like a detail. I did that with a, I did that recently with a Van Gogh. I mean, the colors were, and the texture was amazing. And, and I, I just, I, I had to, I had to snap a little photo of it because so I could remember it so I can refer back to it and um, and have that with me, you know? I think, Bree, it's a, a good point to move into that question about how do we actually manage our inspirations and uh, and to keep them. But just before we do that, uh, uh, Georgia Keith's partner, um, Stiglitz, actually loved photographing clouds. And uh, uh, there's a little tiny connection. And he also loved photographing her and her beautiful hands. Oh, that's um, is right. another thing that's yes. uh, fascinating there. Yes. But 
Um, ways of managing and, and keeping your inspirations is important. Uh, I was just reading a, a, something by Peter Eastway the other day and uh, he actually called them uh, references. Uh, I, I was at a, another workshop with a, a gentleman, a photographer called Peter Coulson, and he actually had a folder in his computer called Inspirations and he collected um, JPEGs in there. Uh, of other people's work and uh, advertising and, and copies and they kept it there. Uh, I have folders absolutely everywhere and uh, there's uh, if I'm on Instagram, I actually save things into um, collections. I, ha I'm, I have an account on uh, Pinterest. I have a Evernote on my phone and I'm making notes there. But do you know what my absolute favourite one, Brie, is a, a, a journal with blank pages and a pencil. And I draw, write, and I write them down. I, I make little drawings and whether it's a dream, a book that I'm reading, a random thought, a picture, they all go in to um, some sort of recording uh, to remind myself. And I do that not because I spend hours going back through them all. The very act of writing it down and drawing a picture of it is a educational memory um, trigger for me. And it, um, it reinfor the act of writing it down or drawing the picture reinforces it into my mind. So when I'm actually out creating, the inspiration can come back to me intuitively uh, without so much conscious effort on sometimes. And at other times, it's incredibly conscious where I'm uh, using an inspiration to go out and play with something quite specifically at that time. Uh, do you have other ideas or ways that you um, keep and manage your inspirations? Well, I'm terrible at journal keeping. I was going to ask you if you, <laughs> I was actually going to ask you if you go back, you know, through everything. Um, yeah, I'm On a really rainy days, yes, sometimes. <laughs> right? So I think, I think for me, it's that, it's that little like iPhone snapshot. I mean, I will, if I see something in a book I like, I will actually take a picture of it and put it in that file. Mm. So I, th I think, you know, that's a little visual co collection. I don't always go back through it. Right. And, and I'm just curious, I would be curious how other people do this too. Uh, I, I assume, uh, you know, a lot of people keep journals, you know, and, and I would say, um, if, if you're in our audience and you aren't keeping track of what inspires you, Oh, please do. Because how will you go back? I like, I, I can't remember all of it for me. And so how could, how can you go back and remember unless you have like this photographic memory? So if you have a photographic rem uh, memory, forget I said this, but like, I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to have that, that collection in some way to be able to go back and have it kind of um, contained and tailored to who you are. And what an amazing thing is to look back through, you know, the your inspiration. Because I will do that. I'll go through my images after I've been to a gallery and go, oh, yes, mm -hmm. I love all of these. Oh, my goodness. I remember that. Right. And so and then it kind of happens all over again. And we can that's a way we can actually get the inspiration on purpose. Like you talked about, like just looking through the books and and having the inspiration happen to you, if we want it on purpose, this is an amazing way because then it's kind of all there. <laughs> so kind of, I don't think it's inspiration overload, but then we can all, then it would be a way to see um, some of the similarities maybe between it all. And like, and so Maybe you take a, a still of a movie. I know you talked, you know, in our previous conversation before we started recording, you told me about some stills of movies. So there's so many different ways we can be inspired, right? Um, poetry, you could take a clip of poetry and put that into your collection. And I'm wondering if like a poem would combine with, um, you know, a movie still and make it like be, so, like be something that's cohesive for you, right? Like, or anything like what are the other ways in the world that we see that that we can find 
inspiration, just maybe as we move about our world. Well, one of the things about creatives is their ability to um, collect ideas from multiple sources and bring them together. And uh, it's also a, a, apparently a sign of genius, people that love sorting things and putting them into categories and uh, um, uh, uh, mentally finding places to put things uh, for our <laughs> Y'all are for geniuses. Use later. You, you heard it from Len, That's y'all right. are geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we, as creatives we are. Right. Um, but <laughs> we are. We, uh, I think our, our bucket or our, our, our journal of ideas or our folder on our phone of snaps, it needs to be deep. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel very strongly about this. That um, We just don't want one idea in there. We want hundreds to yes. to be to be mixing up into the stew of um, ideas that are floating around in the back of our mind, rather than just one solid one that's um, uh, has us so focused and, and becomes a constraint and maybe a burden to us. That we're, we're we're collecting lots of them and throwing them in, and, and so we can dip in and pull out little bits and and actually put them together in our own unique way that uh, is inspiring and interesting for us. And and I would say, I would say if we have this collection that's deep, when we go back and go through it, I don't think we're actually totally consciously doing that. I think, and, mm. and we've talked about this before, that we're doing this on a subconscious level. As we look through, as we kind of piece through all the things that inspire us on on such a deep level, that our brains are like be, because we're creative and our brains like to have a like to have something to work on, our brains are like naturally chewing on um, some of these things and like, how do they fit together? And then that's when we go back to the creative process and we have these aha moments because we've given our minds all of this inspiration. And all of a sudden, we just know how five of them can fit together to do whatever it is that we're going to do, right? So, So that is the beautiful thing about having so many having so much inspiration and just going out and actually like on purpose looking for it and then sometimes not on purpose and just doing something we enjoy but kind of secretly hoping that we find it right it's really really fascinating when we we stop and we look at our work and uh we, we 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 create something and yes it's beautiful and we love it and we're excited about it and then we we ask ourselves what can we learn from it what what's this teaching me and uh, I, I think art is a fantastic educator and is able to educate us um, and when I'm looking at something that excites me of my own and it takes me a lot of time and often it surfaces through conversations with other people so often. Uh, I suddenly start to realize that something from my past is coming back through uh, the art. Um, and uh, once I actually identify it, it jumps out like a sore thumb. It's like, oh, you know, that color palette is from that painting that I loved when I was 15 or I, I stood in front of over here and uh, uh, it really affected me and uh, moved me here or... Perhaps my photographs uh, look like an etching or a lithograph that I was obsessed with when I was at art school, when I was in my, um, uh, still a teenager, uh, studying to be an artist. Uh, And somehow I've actually worked my way back to creating art that is about those things that were important to me in the past. So uh, by living a full life and um, continually adding into this bucket of inspirations, uh, allowing them to influence us and accepting that, our, our work becomes so much more deeper. And who knows when it comes back out um, and we get to use it. Some of the things that go in there will obviously never come out. Uh, if we're taking from everything that uh, everything in our lives, um, movies, books, advertising, uh, reading, uh, engaging with other people, 
uh, clothing, smells, conversations, uh, it's going to keep going in, isn't it? And uh, we can't make enough art to pull out absolutely everything in there. So we keep collecting. Um, we find a means to keep collecting and we keep throwing stuff in there. And uh, it just comes out uh, when it's ready rather than forcing it out on, onto the world. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that it comes out when it's ready. And I think sometimes our minds know when we are, um, when we're ready for that. Um, you talked about some different, some different way, you know, where we find some inspiration. And I was, um, in, in that book, Steal Like an Artist, uh, there was a quote from, and he's a, He's in film. I can't tell you what he does. <laughs> but his name is Jim, and I'm not going to pronounce his last name right because I'm terrible at this. Jim Jarmusch. I'm so sorry, Jim. <laughs> Probably he'll never <laughs> listen to this. But um, there is this quote from him in there, and it says, Nothing is original. So everyone, nothing is original. Someone's going to take what you do and be inspired by it and turn it into something else. Like it's just going to go mm. and, um, and, and uh, you could read that quote in a minute, Lynn. Um, nothing is original. Steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination. Devour old films, new films, music, books, paintings, photographs, poems, dreams. That's yes, interesting, <laughs> right? Random conversations, architecture. I've seen some beautiful architecture. It's amazing. Like I'm super inspired. I, by the way, I'm not done with this quote, but I'm super inspired by the um, the Sacre not Sacre Coeur. Um, oh gosh. Okay, I'll pause and I'll remember it in a second. Okay, architecture, bridges, street signs, trees. There you go, Len. Trees, clouds for me, yes, bodies of you. water. Yeah, right. Light and shadows. Select only things to steal from that speak directly to your soul. This is what we've been talking about, right? If you do this, your work, and then in parentheses, and theft will be authentic. So mm. just the ones that speak to your soul, right? And, and, You'll know it when you feel all of those things, that longing to create and, and all of those things. And by the way, I thought of it. It's in Barcelona. It's called the Sagrada Familia. If you haven't been there, it's uh, it's it's Gaudi's work. It's, uh, it's ah. the most amazing piece of architecture I, I've ever been been in and and the inside with it's so organic and anyway go look it up i'll maybe i'll put a link to and the it's, show notes. was it was it never finished i think it's is it a, it's a, was it was a lifetime project creating it is that right i yeah, can't remember yeah so he's passed on it's, now but it's been years and decades and so but it is getting finished and um i i'll have to look but at some point they will finish it actually there's like <laughs> some date out there and then um, they'll have a big celebration. So, oh, yeah. Amazing. Imagine creating something that uh, keeps getting created after you've passed away right? and is bigger than your whole lifetime. Right. That, uh, I just I think that that's amazing. amazing. Uh, what was that quote you write? Uh, you re um, do you know where that quote came from, by the way? The No. Okay, Which this one? this is the quote that Len put in here. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry this is filled with quotes. We just love it. I think so. Maybe this all these quotes are inspirational for us, and so we put them in here. So there you go. <laughs> um, he's uh, you wrote all art references, the art that comes before it. So that's what we were saying. Like nothing's original. It's all going to reference everything else because everyone is inspired by something else. Someone's going to inspire be inspired by you. Another person's going to be inspired by your work that inspired them, and it's just going to kind of like a an infinity mirror, you know, <laughs> down mm. into the, the eternities. So yeah, and it, it, when your art references all art that's come before it, uh, someone else that looks at your art it, it, who has seen something that um, is uh, mentally and emotionally connecting for them will connect it for you, uh, and the artwork will connect in their minds. Uh, it's a it's quite a big concept and and one that's a, a, a worth a lot of exploring and playing with, but uh, we can't create in a vacuum. 
we 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 need to be honest about that uh, everything. Um, uh, we had this whole world history before us, and uh, it influences uh, everybody else in that process. And part of this is we can't control what other people think and feel about our own artwork. As we're making it, we have our relationship to it. And then uh, as a viewer, everyone has their own relationship to it. And uh, they're going to bring in all the references of all the artworks in the past that they've seen as they're viewing your artwork. And uh, uh, I think it's a, it's quite a big concept um, to play with and uh, maybe one that we might even come back to at another time as well. It's it's kind of a beautiful thing, and it because I think it connects us in so many ways, right? Because we all have our own unique way we see the world, all the ways that we're inspired, and um, and then we put that together. That's why, we, like, I I was just thinking exactly what you were saying is that. We can't control what anyone thinks or feels. We can't control how anyone is inspired by our work. And mm. that's why we want to create something that is personal and unique to us. Because when we because when we do that, that's when we get all of the satisfaction for ourselves and, um, and when we are true to ourselves. And I think when we do that, then other people will other people will find the inspiration in our work and maybe things that we didn't even know that they would yes. that they would see because they all come from you know with their own unique perspective so um, I think I think that's all so beautiful mm. it's basically it's impossible not to have influences isn't it and it's yeah. a, impossible not to have to come to an artwork without our own rose-colored glasses on um, and uh, the more we acknowledge this and actually play with it, the the, the stronger position that we're in, uh, and uh, uh, the more honest and and open we can be with that process, the easier it is uh, to be in this creative state. Uh, I find this whole conversation on inspiration absolutely fascinating because. Uh, it's so tied up with the actual act of creativity, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it doesn't stand alone as its own little um, little element that you must do or uh, uh, you have to do before you do it. It's actually automatically part of it and tied in and uh, part of a bigger picture, isn't it? Yeah, and we yeah, and because the thing is, is we can't force ourselves to be inspired. <laughs> I just think that's interesting. We cannot, I don't find that I can like force myself to be inspired in any way. That's why when you said, you know, you kind yes. of, you yes. read books that you enjoy and you kind of like, kind of have set yourself up for that. Um, but also uh, because, because I can never get away from being inspired and having influences, I like want to go and look for it all, right? Not, I mean, not all of it, but I, I want on purpose to go out and find ways I can be inspired because I know that I'm never, I'm never, I'm not going to live in a vacuum. There's, there's no way mm. I cannot be influenced or inspired, right? And so I want to go and put myself in places where I have, where I can be inspired by some really amazing things. And, um, and I want to do it more and more and more because as I do that, then I get, I have have more and more fuel for my own like creative work and my creative art um so uh th i have one last quote yes and it's love to hear it i think he's in film but i loved it it's jean-luc goddard and he says it's not where you take things from so remember it's not it is about the inspiration but it really is about you so it's not where you take things from it's where you take them to. Mm. Isn't that just lovely? It is. And uh, that is so right, isn't it? It's, uh, it doesn't matter where we get our inspirations from. Uh, all that matters is what we, uh, how we use them and what we, where we take them to. And uh, uh, by taking them 
and doing something with them. Do you know we're actually honouring the that inspiration itself, uh, honouring the original uh, artwork or the whatever it was that did that inspiration. I think that's a, a beautiful um, a quote and and a lovely one to for us to wrap up on, Bree, isn't it? Uh, well, Bree. What another inspiring conversation. <laughs> and is a con- we should add conversations to our list there as well as clouds, <laughs> trees and dreams um, as an inspiration. And, and yes, of course, a conversation is an inspiration as well. And uh, I'm feeling so inspired. Uh, I, I love sharing this with you and, uh, and with others. And I, I hope uh, you're enjoying it as a listener as well. Uh, we have a few questions for you, as usual. Uh, the, the first one is, where do you get your inspiration from? And what did we miss? Like, we, we only had things that we could think of that were inspiring for us or that we've noticed that are inspired for other people. So uh, we reach out to you and ask you to please tell us what... What, where do you get your inspiration from and what did we miss? And uh, uh, we challenge you. Uh, we love to challenge people, don't we? That's our job, isn't it, Bree, as educators and uh, uh, mentors and uh, helping people grow. Why don't you actually start a, a collection of inspirations today? If you haven't got one, start one. And uh, whether it is, a, it's a snap with your iPhone or your phone, whether it's a, a visual diary, uh, uh, I've actually got a whole shelf of visual diaries and they're, they're spread throughout my whole house and there's one in my camera bag, there's one in my travel bag, there's one in my truck, there's, um, uh, there's one beside my bed and uh, there's one right beside me right now in my studio. That, that's my... And there's pens and pencils spread throughout the whole house. So wherever I can have, whenever that inspiration comes, I can write it down somewhere. Um, and I wish I was organised and it was all in one, but no, um, there's there's 20 or 30 of them. Um, start yours today, whether it's, maybe it's a folder on um, or your computer, desktop, or um, perhaps you, you, you find an app that you can actually take web clips from and store them. Perhaps it's even just a bookmark in your web browser. That's called Pinterest. Len, that's called Pinterest. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Well, that's a great one for keeping (laughs) photos, isn't it, and artworks, um, visual inspirations. I also keep articles and and words for my inspirations as well and drawings. So if you do have some and you want to tell us – and we encourage you to keep the conversation with us going. This is all about conversations. Um, why don't you engage with us? Write to us. Uh, you can email us at a, at a create at a creative affair podcast dot com. And uh, uh, of course, that's where you can subscribe to our podcast. And uh, of course, you can follow us on all your favourite readers as well. Well. Uh, do you know, Bree? I've spent the the last two years teaching online, and I've been recording my presentations on video, and uh, I have over a hundred hours of video on photography, composition, creativity, and inspiration, and I even have a a full hour presentation on uh, Austin Kleon's book, Steal Like an Artist, in there. Um, which is a fascinating thing that you've picked that up as well, uh, a, a fabulous thing. Anyway, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can gain access to there and my online classes at Lens Club, uh, and you can find that at lensschool.com. And, yes, of course, I, I run workshops and tours in flesh, and uh, I can't wait to get out and do some more of those. So why don't, if you ever want to join me, we can smell the flowers together and uh, find some inspiration. And uh, we uh, maybe Brie will be with us and we can smell her gorgeous perfume as well. I, I will wear it. <laughs> 
maybe one day we can do the in-person oh, thing. Oh, I can't wait to smell it. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it really is a beautiful work um, that we both do to help inspire and mentor others. And as a coach for creatives, I do this too. Um, I help my clients that may or may not have already found their inspiration and vision and maybe... Um, not maybe, but need help with their mindset to bring their dreams to life. So if this is you, go to www.creativemindscoach.com. You can sign up for a discovery call and I'll help you make a plan to achieve your creative dreams. Isn't that awesome? So before we go, a little help. If you find value in our conversation, help us, please, please help us reach more listeners by sharing this podcast with another creative that you know and love. Um, and we just thank you so much for that. Uh, because our circle are photograph our photographers. And please help us spread this to all kinds of other creatives. Um, so thank you so much. And as, as always, links to everything are in the show notes. You can visit us at a creativeaffairpodcast.com. And uh, you can also sign up for our newsletter. Just go to our website and click subscribe. So that's it. Len, I loved this conversation. and Oh, I do too. <laughs> it was so much more than I thought it would be. And I think that happens every single time <laughs> because we don't write everything down that we're going to talk about, but it ends up being so beautiful at the end and I love it. So. Oh, I do too. It's so wonderful. It's inspiring. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, it's, so in it's so, so engaging. Uh, so engaging. I agree. Well, until next time, enjoy your flowers. <laughs> and I will enjoy my perfume. And we will talk next time. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. And thank you. And uh, enjoy. Mm -hmm.